That's me. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube art channel. I don't know when I'm going to be uploading this. My uploading schedule has been a bit, um... Unexistent. Yes, I did cut my hair. I did it myself here at home. It wasn't the best option. Today, as per many people's requests, I'll be talking about the last book that I read. I'll try and give my honest opinion about it. And without further ado, let's just get into Roddy's book club review of a book that I read some days ago. The book that I'll be talking about today is Ways of Being, Advice for Artists by Artists. This was compiled by James Cahill, 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 I don't know how to say his name. He's a writer and critic based in London. This book, as it says, it's supposed to give you, well, us, emerging artists, advice to be a professional artist. And so I thought that since I left uni this year, it could be a good book to read. The preface, or the preface, or however you say that. Preface. To the book is... What if you could sit down with your favourite artists and ask them anything you liked? Life, work, inspiration. Based on multiple new interviews and archival material from a huge roster of artists, this book does exactly that. Encompassing every stage of an artist's life, from early works to debut shows and mid and late career stages, this book allows artists to answer or ponder all these key questions. I just want to start by saying that I enjoyed this book. This being said, I don't think it's the more diverse book in terms of the people they chose to do this. It's mostly based on British artists' opinion and British art. There there are some people here and there that are from other countries and other places in the world, but there's not that many people that aren't from Britain or that work in Britain. And most of these artists are really well known, like Tracy Emmons, Damien Hirst, Larry Poons, Jeff Koons, Louise Bourgeois, and a bunch of other artists that have achieved a lot in their lives. And that's, that's fine. Uh, I'm just not sure if they're the best people to ask advice to. I'm saying this because most of them got their success or they left art school in the late 80s, early 90s, some of them a bit before that. And the idea they have of the art world is a bit different from what the art world actually is right now. This is not to say they don't deserve all the success they've had, but back then it was a bit different to be successful and to get somewhere in life. The youngest artist that I could find on the book, even he doesn't have a lot of great advice to give. It's a bit me, me, me. This is what I did and this is what I do. But I was happy to see that most of the quotes are quite inspiring and quite uh, refreshing. And it's nice to see that people that aren't emerging artists anymore still understand what it is to be an emerging artist and they understand what kind of art world we're living in right now. It's really good to know that those people that have achieved so much in life realize that it isn't as easy for us today with so many people and with internet and social media and everything it isn't as easy for us to make a name for ourselves. The interviews and the quotes that the writer gathered for the book are divided into five stages or chapters and they're called youth, breaking out, on the scene, the professional artist and experience. I guess these are kind of the main stages in an artist's life. Obviously youth inspires you a lot as you can see by my work. Your childhood, everything kind of influences what you're doing next. Breaking out is that time when you're trying to make it in the world and someone actually sees you and sees your work and they're like oh that person is good. On the scene is when you're already into the art world. Maybe thriving, maybe not. And then the professional artist artist is what you become after you go through all of these initial stages when you're already a well-known, well-versed artist. And obviously the last one is experience. And I think most of the quotes from this chapter are from older artists. There are some amazing quotes. Not all of them are great. Most of them are quite repetitive. Most of them say, do you do your own work, be happy with what you do, be inspired by what you do. And at least for me, that's something that goes without saying. If you're in the art world or if you're in the industry, I know you don't hear that a lot and not a lot of people are gonna say that to you, but it's just something that you should keep on the back of your mind every single day. Because obviously what you do is unique in its own way and only you can do it. <laughs> I'd like now to highlight some of the quotes that I chose from the book and then I'll go into my final observations. 
I really like this quote by Larry Poons. He says, anybody seriously can be considered an artist no matter what they do. It's a self-generating definition. What people feel they are regardless of other criteria. It's not a sociological term. I really like this quote because this is what I'm always saying, like anyone can be an artist if they want to be an artist. You don't need a degree, you don't need to know how to paint or you don't need to know any specific techniques. Being an artist is about expressing yourself. In a subchapter that's called Life After Art School, Fiona Ray has got this amazing way of describing what it is to leave art school. She says, when you leave art school it's like falling off a cliff into nothingness and that's exactly what it feels like. I know it sounds cliche but it is exactly what it feels like. I'm gonna tell you this really short story about this lady that I ran into in a supermarket. I just recently arrived in England, it was one of my first times going to the supermarket all by myself and I was in line ready to pay for my stuff and this old lady that was behind me, she asked me like what I was doing, what I was studying and whatever and she was like oh just enjoy your three years at university because after that you just fall into a black hole. I mean, I see the light at the end of the black hole, but it's still, especially with the whole situation that's going on right now, it's really hard to see the light at the end of this black hole. In a subchapter that's called Facing Criticism, David Trigley says, Everybody needs a response. You can't make the work in a vacuum, but you also need to think very carefully yourself about the work. There are certain questions that only you can ask. This is what I've suffered with the most. I don't have anyone to respond to my work because obviously being in a studio setting you have a lot of people that look at your work and you look at other people's works and you have interactions and people ask questions and that thing really keeps you going. That's what keeps your work evolving, especially with the lockdown. I think that's where I've been missing the most. This is one of the best quotes that the book has and it's again by Larry Poons and he says, everything in our existence Everything that comes by you or past you that you don't know you've picked up, you do pick up. Everything in its time may or may not influence you. Whether you knew Velasquez existed or that artist or, or writer existed, none of that makes you a better artist. It might enrich your life and it puts you in touch with stuff but no more so than walking into a library and picking out books. Like I said, it's one of the best quotes that I read in the whole book. I truly believe this. I struggled a lot with justifying my work before going into university because I felt everything I did had to have a meaning. Knowing that, like Larry Poons was saying, gives you knowledge, but that's about it. It doesn't make you a better artist or a worse artist than the people who knew who Velasquez was or Van Gogh was. Just because you read an article about this, it doesn't make you a better artist than me because I didn't read that same article. I'm not discouraging research for artists or overcomplicated art, but there is a niche for people who don't think research fits their art and their way of making and creating and I think that's when the audience as well as the artist grows the most is when they don't really have a point to what they're doing so they're trying to have a conversation about something that they're not really sure what it is but that conversation is being had anyway and a lot more interpretations could come into the work like for instance what I do as I've said many times on this channel I don't like to over explain it because I really like what people have to say about my work and what they think about it when they first run into it and I just want to say this one last time this is not to say that you don't have to read or research or do anything before creating which I mean you don't but it just enriches maybe the experience but it all again it all depends on the audience you want to capture on the people you want looking at your work on what you want to feel about your work I think most of all art is about expression whether that expression is explained based upon research based upon life experience or it's based upon everything that you've been through and everything that you go through, everything that you read, everything that you see and... But it doesn't, again, it doesn't make you a better artist. To finalize my review on this book, I want to say that you definitely should buy it. I think it's always, like Larry Poons was saying, it's always good to have some knowledge about things. It doesn't make you a better or a worse artist or a better or worse professional than anyone in the world. There's a lot of valuable advice and quotes. I would only say that in terms of design it's a bit confusing they repeat a lot of the quotes obviously on purpose but it gets a bit confusing if you've read it or not or if it's just out of place I think it's a really interesting book especially how they decided
wanted to make the actual book and if you're into book binding or things like that I think it's interesting to see how the book was made. The only thing I would I would have liked to see a bit more was diversity. Being a foreign student and having gone through that experience of being a foreigner I really enjoy reading about other people's experiences as a foreigner. Anyway I hope you enjoyed my review about the book. Once again I'm just gonna say the name of it so you don't forget it's Ways of Being Advice for Artists by Artists and it's compiled by James Cahill. Cahill? Cahill? I don't know when I'll be back again so I hope you really enjoyed this video. Watch it as many times as you want because I don't know when I'll be posting the next one. Let me know in the comments below if you do buy the book, if you've read the book, if you have any opinions about the book or if you have any other books that might be similar to this one and that you think I should read. Before finishing the video, I just want to thank everyone for watching me all the time, even if I don't have the best uploading schedule. Thank you for caring about my opinion. I hope it was helpful and with nothing else to say, be happy, keep creating and keep your hopes up because you never know when things might happen. Bye guys.